Hey, welcome to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Wetmore, and this is Andrew Kramer. We're at TCF Bank Stadium, where the Vikings just beat the Atlanta Falcons 41-28. An impressive debut from rookie quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. We'll talk about that. Of course, he had to leave with injury, so there's news updates on that as well. Uh, we'll also discuss Adrian Peterson sent a motivational text message to head coach Mike Zimmer, I guess, which was relayed to the team. We'll touch on that. And then, finally... The Vikings run game really got it going today after not having shown up previously without Peterson. We'll touch on that, how that uh, was possible even mm -hmm. today. Uh, Andrew, start Teddy Bridgewater's debut. I mean, you know, you don't always have high expectations for a rookie quarterback coming in and making his first start. Um, but I, I would say it's safe to say he exceeded my expectations. What did you think about his debut? He exceeded my expectations as well. I mean, he was a rookie that played mistake-free football. And really in his first NFL start, if he made a few mistakes, nobody here, at least in this press box, would have batted an eye because that was mm -hmm. would have been too expected. But he didn't make those mistakes. He was a guy that came out and wasn't afraid to take shots. Uh, you could tell early that this game plan was trying to get the ball out of his hands fast, let receivers do things after the catch. Sure. They didn't really ask him to do too much there. But... Once that fourth quarter came along, they found themselves down one point, and here he leads a couple drives to uh, to get them back on top, and the defense really sealed the deal by holding Atlanta scoreless in the fourth quarter. He leaves the game with an injury. Christian Ponder came in, uh, finished off the game, just a bunch of handoffs uh, to, to kind of bleed out the clock as the Vikings took control of the game late in the fourth quarter. Bridgewater said in his post-game press conference that he's headed for an MRI now. Uh, he'll get that, and we'll have – Final word, probably Sunday evening yeah. on the Vikings quarterback. Whether or not he'll start Thursday in Green Bay is still very much in question. But I asked Bridgewater after the game in the press conference if he felt he could have played at the end of the fourth quarter if necessary. Because we saw him walk back mm -hmm. out on the sideline after he was originally yeah. carted off. He said he felt that he could have. He thought if the Vikings needed him in that situation, he could have played through the pain. Um, but... As I said, his status for Thursday is still undetermined. He did go into the locker room for x-rays, which were negative uh, on his ankle, but he'll have an MRI tonight. We'll have more information on that. Uh, shifting off of Bridgewater, though, for a moment, Andrew, uh, Adrian Peterson, who's away from the team as he settles his own legal situation, apparently texted head coach Mike Zimmer before the game with some uh, motivational words for the team. What did you hear about that from the players in the locker room after the game? Yeah, really, Matt Asiata was the guy who fills in for Adrian Peterson here. He had three touchdowns today. He averaged, you know, uh, uh, you know, Paul Tree, I think he had about four yards per carry. It wasn't too much, but he, he just kind of in passing says, yeah, Adrian was with us in spirit. He sent a uh, motivational text, motivational speech via text. And I kind of had to dig into that because uh, apparently him and Mike, uh, Adrian Peterson and Mike Zimmer were passing along text messages mm -hmm. back and forth with each other. And Adrian kind of took it a step further and had some words he wanted to say. So we passed along a, a, a abbreviated motivational speech to Mike Zimmer, who passed that along to his teammates, obviously, before Sunday's afternoon game here. Adrian Peterson has not been with the team for about a week and a half, a couple weeks now, since September 17th, when the Vikings reversed their initial decision to reinstate him. Uh, he very well could not play for this team for the rest of the season. So this team is really preparing for life without Peterson. And it helps when your rookie running back, Jarek McKinnon, has 135 rushing yards, which is by far a career high for him. He had 21 career yards entering this game, and he takes his first touch for 55 yards. Uh, I believe it was a, a handoff right up the middle. I mean, that's something that you really need from a guy like that who was drafted in the third round. Really, they were trying to prepare for life without Peterson this year. They didn't obviously expect it to come this fast, right. but... Jarek was able to take his opportunities and make the most of them. Uh, even Asiata, like I said, converted on his goal line touches. I mean, that's something you need when you're going up against a high-powered offense like Atlanta. And really, Teddy Bridgewater didn't have to do all that much because he had that running game supporting yeah. him. You mentioned McKinnon's home run off the bat. I'm looking here at the stats. In 44 rush attempts, the Vikings average 5.5 yards. Now, obviously, that long home run carry sort of impacts that yeah. total. But overall, still an impressive day for the running game, something we hadn't really seen since week one or since the preseason, because yep. uh, week one, obviously, they had Peterson. Uh, but in the preseason, how they were successful was the offensive line was really controlling the trenches, and that's kind of what I saw today. Obviously, that's 
going to be easier to go see when we go look at the film a second time. But what was your first impression of how the offensive line performed? Well, that's how that's what I saw too. Because Matt Asiata is a guy, he'll give you what the blockers are giving you. He's not going to break any tackles. He's not going to make any Adrian Peterson-like plays. Jarek McKinnon is more that playmaker. and We saw make, him make guys miss. And really, that's how he was able to thrive. But Matt Asiata, when he gets 75 yards and a few touchdowns, you know the line is blocking because that's really what he'll take. And he had a, a season-long 12-yard rush, which really will be his ceiling uh, this season unless you can get just a, a complete you know, clear yeah, a complete clear play block. But really, this is what the offense needs. They need their offensive line to, to thrive. And without Brandon Fusco, yeah. Vlad Dacos was able to come in here and more than hold his own. I thought he did a great job. I was very skeptical of him coming into here. I was one of his biggest critics just because – I thought Brandon Fusco was one of their best blockers all around. And to lose a guy like that, you really couldn't tell they were without him today. Well, and we've harped on this guy for a lot in the first three games. So we'll say here, Matt Khalil, I think, yes. had a good game. I agree completely. I talked to Matt Khalil after the game, and he said, hey, I know I've had a few bad games. I don't need to listen to the critics. I'm my harshest critic. But he admitted he had some struggles. Obviously, we were able to see that. But he said it was a good confidence booster today going up against a guy like Jonathan Babineau in a, in a Falcons defensive line that really doesn't scare many people. And Khalil did what he should have done and shut down their uh, pass rush. Probably a confidence booster for the entire team. Yes. Not only seeing how well Bridgewater played, but the way that the Vikings were able to control this game against a very good Atlanta Falcons team. A lot of people may be writing off the season after Peterson uh, leaves the team and Castle goes down for the year. You think maybe this is all about development for Bridgewater. The Vikings showed today that this season's not over yet. And no, I think and, that's impressive. And not even to mention, they didn't have Kyle Rudolph either. That's so right. you're without your starting running back, tight end, and right guard. And you put up 550-some yards of offense with yep. 41 points. That blew us away. Impressive win for the Vikings. We're about to go record a Purple Podcast. If you enjoy any of the Vikings coverage on 1500ESPN.com, make sure you check out the Purple Podcast. Go up to show page at the top of the page here. Drag down to Purple Podcast, and all of our archived episodes will be there. We'll have our latest episode posted here Sunday night with a lot, uh, a deeper dive on everything Vikings, especially run game, Peterson, Bridgewater, all of the above. For Andrew Kramer, I'm Derek Wetmore, signing off from TCF Bank Stadium. Thanks for watching.